That sounds good. I thank the male chorus or the, the mass chorus. I thank Minister Jeremiah Payne. I can sing like that, but it come out different in the bathroom than it do in the church. <laughs> but I'm going to do like this commercial told me, say, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Church, say amen. amen. Uh, this morning, I want to give honor to God, our creator. I want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to give honor to the Holy Spirit which is our God. I want to give honor to the pastor in his absence, Elder Vine. I want to give honor to Mother Deaconess Sheila Payne. Amen. I want to give honor to Minister Rosia, Minister Chairs, Minister Payne, Reverend Fennell, uh, the deacons slash choir. Amen. And I want to give honor to each and every person in their respectful place. And at this time, also, ushers, we want to give a special thanks to the ushers. Amen. 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 And at this time, you guys can be seated. And also, I want to give uh, honor to Brother Keenan. Uh, we 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 down in Crawfordville. And we, we have a tendency of uh, checking on each other. So, you know, Crawfordville is a long way from Tallahassee, so it's good to have a friend in Crawfordville. Amen. But I do want to give him honor as well. And I want to give a special honor to my mother, Amen. Emma Payne. Thank you. And each and every person that's in this building, I want to give honor to. Amen. Our scripture that was read was out of Revelations. And I want to go to Revelation chapter, the same chapter, chapter 12, but I'm going to the 17th verse. And it reads in a translated uh, edition that the dragon became angry with the woman and he declared war against the rest of her children and all who kept the commandments and confessed that they belonged to Jesus. The King James Version said all those that had a testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, my brothers and sisters, in this day and this time, it's very difficult for us to understand what's going on. There's a war that's going on that we're in the middle of. Amen. As a matter of fact, I go as far as saying that we was born in the middle of a war, unless there was anybody born before Adam. Anybody in the building that was born before Adam? <laughs> so we was born in a war. We was born during a time when man missed the mark and sinned and, and, and disobeyed God. And a lot of us don't understand what this war is all about. The Bible tells us that Satan, he waged war on the woman. The woman actually represented Israel. He waged war on those that kept the commandments of God. The ones that kept the commandments of God were the children of Israel. And he waged war on those that kept the testimony of Jesus Christ. The, the ones that kept the testimony of Jesus Christ is us. We're, we're the Christians. It's some of Christians. And we often talk about being thankful for what God has done for us. And I don't know about y'all, but seems like to me, when it comes down to Jerry Payne, God has a 24-hour job keeping me out of trouble. <laughs> and I believe I'm not the only one, just nobody else ain't saying amen. <laughs> But the good thing about God is that he looked past yes. all of our faults and he saw what we need. Yes. Yes. Uh, Satan, which they call the accuser of the brother. Y'all don't know no accusers, do y'all? <laughs> Let me just tell you how accusers are, just in case you don't know. There were some accusers that was in the Bible that caught this lady in the very act of adultery. Mm -hmm. 
and the accusers wanted to throw up Moses' law and say about Moses' law to stone her. Isn't it like the accusers to never look at what they did wrong? Yeah. Yeah. I always suggesting that you pay for what you got wrong. Come on, come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Can I get a couple witnesses? Yeah. 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 Ain't that something? They won't tell what they did wrong, but they can itemize what you did wrong. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this morning I'm talking about a war that's in heaven. You see, Satan, and you'll find that in the book of Isaiah, Satan, because God made Adam, Satan became unemployed. He lost his job. Satan was the praise angel. Satan was the one that was supposed to give God his glory and give God his honor. Come on, come on. But then Satan got caught up in pride and he wanted to take the place of God. Yeah, yeah, man. Isn't that something how there's always somebody want to take your place but yeah, don't understand amen. the shoes come on, come on, come on. that you had to walk yeah. in to get yeah. to where you had yeah. to get. Yeah. Yeah. If we knew the tears that had to be shed, sometimes we won't volunteer to amen. take somebody amen. else's amen. journey. Amen. 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 If we understood the problems and the burdens that came along with certain positions, I guarantee you we wouldn't volunteer to do that. Come on, come on, preacher. But Satan wanted to be greater than God. Yeah. And he said, I'll exalt my kingdom over the most high. Uh -huh. In other words, he wanted to be God. Uh -huh. And the thing that amazes me is that that didn't work for Satan, so why did he think he was going to work for Adam and Eve? Uh -huh. <laughs> You see, he tricked Adam and Eve to do something that he couldn't do himself. Well, well. Isn't that how people are sometimes? Yeah. They tell you that you can do it. They tell you that you can make it, <laughs> and they can't make it themselves. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm talking about the accuser of, of the brother now. Amen. But there was a war going on. The Bible even says that Michael fought against the devil. And the devil lost. Mm -hmm. We know that the devil comes to steal, kill, and devour. Yeah, yes. And I'm still on the war in heaven. Now, let me just ask a question. How many people in this building, and you got to be ashamed of it, that would consider themselves to be smart? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how many people in this building will consider themselves to have a little bit of intelligence? How many people in this building will consider themselves to have a little bit of wisdom? A little bit of knowledge? And a little bit of understanding? All right? Who is the smartest man in the Bible? Solomon. Wisest man on earth, right? Now we're smart, but not as smart as Solomon, right? Solomon is undefeated when it comes to man, but not God. But just from you guys witnessing, I understand that there's people out here that have some wisdom and have some knowledge and have some understanding. Is that correct? Yes. So, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, it tells how wise Satan is and that no secret can be hidden from him. Uh -huh. Well, I meditate on the Bible, study the Bible, understand the Bible, and we often say, well, Satan, he's a defeated foe. He's all, he, yeah, he already been defeated. But Satan don't understand that. <laughs> Satan was smarter than Solomon. He was the smartest human on earth. So if Satan's so smart, why don't he understand that the war is already over? If Satan's so smart, why does he don't why he don't understand that he can never defeat God? If Satan is so smart, why he don't understand that he can never defeat the Christians? Because Christians don't die, they just multiply. 
I better say that again. Christians don't die, they just multiply. And, and God gave me the revelation that it's in a movie called Maghetto. And in this movie called Maghetto is when the devil, which is in Revelation, he takes over the world. He goes to all the nations in the world and he gathers up an army to fight against God. But what gave me the answer, a man made a quote. He said, he that holds the gate of Jerusalem in the end of days shall rule the world. So in other words, that told me that there's something that Satan knows that only him and God knows. And that's why it's such a fight over Jerusalem. See, Satan knows something that we don't know. We already said we smart, right? We already say we have some wisdom. We already say we have some knowledge, right? That's just like me getting on top of that building, acting like I'm Superman, like I can fly. Uh -huh. <laughs> I ain't gonna go nowhere because I can't fly. And it don't make no sense in the fooling myself because I know I can't do it. So why would Satan fool himself into something that he know he can't do. Yeah, that's right. Isaiah 55 and 8 say, His thoughts, not my thoughts, his ways are not my ways, yeah. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. So something that Satan knows that we don't know. But the good thing about it is that no matter what, if you stick with God, everything is going to be all right. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this world, this society, this country is in trouble. Mm -hmm. Everything that you can think of from A to Z goes. They got what they call marriage boot camp and everybody sinners. They even got now when you marry somebody that's locked up in jail to get out of jail and think that's going to work. They got love and hip hop. You can go to Miami, you can go to Atlanta, pretty soon it'll be right here in Tallahassee. <laughs> Does that make anybody else think of the times that we in? It say, woe unto them that cause evil good, that cause good evil, that cause bitter sweet, and that cause darkness light. Yes, sir. I'm talking about the war that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, my brothers and sisters, there used to be a song where this guy saying, it's your thing. Mm -hmm. Do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. Uh, but if you belong to the Lord, you can't, you can't do what you want to do. Uh, you can't sing on Sunday, I don't do the things that I used to do no more. And then on Monday, talking about there ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of bump and grind. <laughs> I'm talking about a war that is in heaven. And when I look at the word war, war is a state of armed conflict between states and governments and societies and groups with extreme violence and military forces. And then the Lord put my spirit to the armed forces, the Army, the Air Force, the Marines, the Navy, and the National Guard. That's five categories of five different levels of armed services. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Did that get five? Right. But once you get saved, you change over to a new military. I'm going to give you five more different categories of spiritual military. Uh -huh. You got the apostles and the prophets. Yeah. You got the evangelists and the pastors. Mm -hmm. And you also have the teachers. Mm -hmm. And what about saying God is like a Marine, he just needs a few good men. Mm -hmm. And women. Mm -hmm. And children. Because we can't do it all on our own. That's right. That's right. Because if we think that we could do it all on our own, my brothers and sisters, we're being defeated. Amen. That's why the children that's at school is doing everything from A to Z. That's why everything is going on but the word of God. 
What's going on today is like trying to put your car in neutral and drive at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or if you got a washing machine, you're trying to wash and spin mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. It's idle. This world and the condition that it's in without God, this world ain't going nowhere. And I don't know, y'all tell me, it's just so hard for me to understand this word when the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. Uh -huh. Can anybody tell me what that means? Don't be conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. Can somebody help me? Mm -hmm. Don't be conformed to this world. What does that mean? Don't do the things of the world. Can somebody itemize it? Can y'all help me preach this morning? What kind of things of the world do y'all help me out now? What kind of, what they do? Say, say that again? Unsaved. He just gave you the gravy. That's the light stuff. What does the world do? How the world say, how the world dress, how the world act, how the world talks. I'm talking about this war that is in heaven. And my brothers and sisters, you can't serve two masters. Because if you try to serve two masters, one you're going to neglect, and the other one going to get your full attention. Scripture say one you're going to love, and the other one you're going to hate. In other words, you can't make two people happy at the same time. Because if you try to, one of them will be sad and one of them will be happy. One of them you're going to neglect and one of them going to get your full attention. That's why the world calls them players. Because <laughs> they don't know which way to go and all you're doing is playing. And you can't serve.